Hello, good afternoon. Ceremonies have taken place in Britain and Europe to mark the centenary of the end of World War I in 1918. Wreaths were laid at the Cenotaph in London by Prince Charles and for the first time the German president. In Paris, world leaders including President Trump and the Russian leader Vladimir Putin paid their respects. Well, we'll report from Paris in a moment, but first, Nicholas Witchell is at the Cenotaph for us in London. Nick. By chance this year, the anniversary of Armistice Day, the 11th of November, has fallen on the second Sunday in November, our Remembrance Sunday. And that has certainly added to the poignancy this morning as we have collectively cast our minds back to November 1918. On this day 100 years ago, Big Ben chimed at the moment a world war there we are, ended. That was, that was it. 800,000 or so British lives had been lost. It was in their remembrance that the cenotaph was originally constructed. And in timeless fashion and largely unchanging form, the ceremony of remembrance has taken place on Whitehall in every peacetime year since. On this more than usually significant day of remembrance, with the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day coincidentally falling on Remembrance Sunday, the nation's leaders took their places around the Cenotaph, led by the Prince of Wales. As was the case last year, the Queen watched from a balcony above as Big Ben signalled the start of the national two-minute silence in memory of all those from Britain and the Commonwealth who lost their lives in war. In Whitehall, after the last post sounded by Royal Marine Buglers, the Prince of Wales placed the Queen's wreath of poppies against the Cenotaph's northern face. And then for the first time, a German wreath was laid at the Cenotaph by Germany's head of state, President Steinmeier. 100 years after the end of the First World War, in which an estimated two million Germans lost their lives, an historic gesture of reconciliation. After the VIPs, it was the turn of the veterans to march past and lay their wreaths in memory of lost colleagues. They were followed this year by the People's March, members of the public who wanted to add their tribute to those of a lost generation who died in a world war which ended a hundred years ago today. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at the Cenotaph. Well, in Paris, world leaders gathered at the Arc de Triomphe and the French president, Emmanuel Macron, urged them to build hope rather than playing on fear. He said the First World War, which claimed some 20 million lives, had been a massacre, the scars of which are still visible on the face of the world. From Paris, our correspondent Mark Lowen reports. The bells marked the end of the horror a century ago chimes replacing guns as peace began. In quiet procession, leaders of states that tore each other apart back then now coming together. Over 70 led by Emmanuel Macron up the Champs-Élysées to the Arc de Triomphe. Making an entrance, Donald Trump, not the center of attention today, but fashionably late, the man who's shaken traditional alliances. And then the last, Vladimir Putin. A century since Russia and America fought with the Allies, their relations with Western Europe are now under strain. The two populist leaders rather cosier together. <laughs> 
President Macron hails from France's battle-scarred north. His British great-grandfather was decorated at the Somme. And he's warned the post-war liberal democracy he champions is under threat by echoes of the past. Patriotism. Patriotism is the opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is treason. If we think our interests may only come first and we don't care for others, it's a treason of our values, a betrayal of all moral values. We must remember this. A poignant interlude by Yo-Yo Ma, born in Paris, playing at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This country at the centre of the World War was today the heart of world diplomacy. From President Macron, memories of the brutality, but also a call to protect the multilateral order that came from it. He's increasingly now, though, a minority against nationalist authoritarian leaders. Belgium, too, was consumed by war and there today tributes to the battles scarred into Europe's consciousness. A homage to those killed in the trenches and a nod to the troops from the colonies that backed up Allied forces, dying in a war that wasn't theirs. In Paris, damp skies and a reflective mood as the eternal flame was lit. The bloodshed may be a distant memory for this country, but its president is fighting new battles today. A once war-torn continent is now a fractured one. Mark Lowen, BBC News, Paris. And in a unique memorial to those who lost their lives in the conflict, portraits of servicemen and women have been etched into the sand on beaches around the United Kingdom. Our correspondent Duncan Kennedy reports now from Folkestone in Kent, which has paid tribute to one of the First World War's most enduring figures. The piercing eyes of a celebrated war poet, today etched onto the very beach he had once left to meet war and death. For Wilfred Owen, what had been a shoreline of embarkation this morning became a canvas of commemoration. The project had been organised by the film director Danny Boyle, who says the face is a metaphor for tragedy. It's wonderful that there are permanent structures that will outlive us and outlast us, but I thought it was a good way to reflect on our own um, time here, you know, which is temporary, really. As the tide ebbed away, 30 artists crafted the contours of the face. Hundreds of people lined the shore to take in the imagery and the symbolism. It feels very much like he's here and he's alive and he's, as you say, representing so many people. Really special, really special. 32 faces have been created on beaches around Britain. In Blackpool, Lance Corporal John Arkwright, who fell in 1914. At Murlock in County Down, John McCants, who died at Passchendaele. Just like Private Ellis Evans, here at Colwyn Bay. By mid-morning, the impatient tides returned to roll in over the faces like tears of a lost generation. The images fleeting in nature, but enduring in our memories. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, in Folkestone. The nation stood in contemplative silence today to remember those who've died in conflict over the years. Millions paused to reflect at the precise time the guns fell silent on the Western Front at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. It was this exact day, a century ago, when the armistice was signed, which brought an end to the First World War. Ronke Phillips reports. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. 100 years after armistice was declared, the nation came together in silence to remember those who gave their lives for their country. After the pause to reflect, Prince Charles laid the first wreath on behalf of his mother. 
The Queen watched on from a balcony. Then, in an historic act of reconciliation, the German president. Followed by other senior royals. And then the Prime Minister and Jeremy Corbyn. In every corner of the UK, buglers played and church bells were rung as communities paid tribute. In Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh and at the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire. Thousands of people gathered to remember the fallen and the grief of those who survived. The nation's thank you procession past the cenotaph included 10,000 people chosen by ballot. Then to recreate the spontaneous bell ringing that took place in 1918, a repeat a hundred years on to mark the centenary of the armistice. Ron K. Phillips, ITV News. World leaders gathered at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier beneath the Arc de Triomphe in Paris for a service of remembrance. Emmanuel Macron led the tributes at the event attended by Donald Trump, Angela Merkel and Vladimir Putin. There were ceremonies too in Belgium, Australia and New Zealand. Sam Holder has more. Just over a hundred years ago, most of these countries were at war. Today, almost 70 world leaders joined together in Paris to remember the moment that war ended. France's President Macron side by side with Germany's Chancellor Merkel. Between their two countries alone, more than three million died. <laughs> Presidents Trump and Putin also joined the ceremony, a symbolic as it was sombre, held at the Arc de Triomphe, home of France's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Although the exact moment the guns fell silent at 11 past 11 was missed by the world leaders who were running late. In Ypres, the last post played as it is every night at the Menin Gate, with the names of 55,000 missing British and Commonwealth troops. Thousands of poppies dropped in their memory the battlefields in this part of Belgium saw some of the fiercest fighting and became an enduring image of the horrors of war. New Zealand became the first country to mark the 100-year anniversary. At midnight UK time, 100 cannons fired. The signing of the armistice marked two in Australia, 1% of the population killed, most on the other side of the world. The battle may have been centred in Europe, but the armistice brought an end to a global war. Sam Holder, ITV News.